It's around this time every console generation that I get the itch to talk about the next generation. You know, there's always the the curbs, like, ooh, the PS4 is coming out, I want to discuss it. And then after it's been out for a while, it's like, ah, who cares? But now, a new generation is starting! The PlayStation 5 has been revealed, that's right! And, hey, I enjoy talking about gaming, gaming history, gaming news, and so you know what? We're gonna do, I was gonna say, we're gonna do an E3 coverage thing. There is no E3 this year. So we're gonna do a PlayStation event coverage thing. So, yeah, let's talk about it. So yes, the other day, the PlayStation 5 reveal event happened. They kind of did it like Nintendo. I guess Nintendo was ahead of the curve. They've been doing it digital for years, and now it's like, you know what? Let's just do our own digital one, which I actually preferred because it cut out a lot of First off, downtime, you know, people in the audience clapping and oh my god, yay! Which is fun when it's a big announcement, but I think it expands those shows into way too long. And plus, you didn't have people coming out on stage. Welcome to the stage! So-and-so from so-and-so! Hey! Hello, everyone! Unprecedented visuals, unprecedented scale. Blah, blah, blah. No. PlayStation was a little smarter this time, and they just said, you know what? We're gonna show you some trailers. Here you go, check out our stuff. And I kind of appreciate that. Watching this event kind of made me realize gaming has matured a bit. You know, looking back 10 years ago when the Xbox 360 came out, I think gaming got very, very corporate. And it, it, and it showed with things like loot boxes and DLCs and season pass, trying to wring money out as much as you can. And we still have those things happening but they are certainly fading away. Like recently, uh, Warface Breakout came out, which I'm doing it worth my time on, and that ha the game has loot boxes. It felt like a throwback for a game to just launch with like, oh, geez, let's take your money. It was weird, so I'm glad we're moving past that, and gaming has matured in a way where, you know, there, w there was like one mention of basketball. There wasn't a 30 minute segment about the EA Sports and blah, blah, blah. We'll have to see if Xbox does that, but gaming has gotten to a point where it's like, let's just make some cool games. Not everything has to be multiplayer. Not everything has to be single player, not everything has to be, people can just make stuff and they present it. And that's what I appreciate. And right off the bat, I want to say, I ain't no fanboy, PlayStation 5, Xbox, I don't give a shit, I play on PC anyways most of the time, but if there's a cool exclusive, I always boot up my PlayStation or I used to have an Xbox and check it out. And honestly, over the last generation, there hasn't been many Xbox exclusives to play, but that brings me to my point that this generation is going to be a lot more interesting than the current one. The current one, let's be honest, like I said, not fanboying, but the PlayStation brand was more dominant this generation. They had way more games, way better games, especially in the last couple of years, and I think the reason for that is Xbox realized that and basically said, this generation's a wash, let's calm down, let's buckle down, and get ready for next gen. Because a few years back, they bought a whole bunch of studios. They're working really hard to just have a killer lineup when the Xbox Series X launches. And that's, that's honestly better. I want there to be a better Xbox, because that forces PlayStation to also be better. It's better that there's competition. This time, I think both are positioned to go at it, and that's more exciting to me as a gamer. You know, I don't want a dominant console. I want everyone to be on equal footing and going at it because at the end of the day, we get better stuff from it. But anyways, I just wanted to talk about my general consensus of, you know, the industry. If you guys like this video, I'll talk about Xbox too. But today, we're gonna focus on PlayStation and their event and what they showed off. So this was the PlayStation 5 event. And, you know, to classify this coming generation, I think with everything we look at here, you can kind of see that this generation isn't so much about visuals. I think visuals or graphics have gotten to a point where they're good. You know, look at God of War. God of War on PlayStation 4 is like, amazing and that's a lot that's still like that's old technology i think this generation is going to be about you know they've talked about the ssd loading times and basically perfecting the styles we already have you know to get god of war working on playstation i'm sure it took a lot of work and if it's easier for a playstation 5 game to look just as good with less work great i want and I think they talk about this uh, every generation, but this seems like out of most of them, the generation where gaming is kind of unhinged. You know, it's more about developers making cool art styles and making cool visuals instead of just pushing realistic graphics. Sure, it's going to be pushing forward, but I think this generation is about polishing what we already have and making it much more effortless and therefore easier to create stuff. But anyways, let's talk about the event. The very first thing they showed off was a Rockstar logo. And me and me and John were actually watching this or Apsro in the other room when this was going live. And the first thing we see is a Rockstar logo and we're like, 
oh shit, are they gonna drop GTA 6? Like, that would be a hell of a bomb to just go, GTA 6, and you know what? It's exclusive for a year, or something like that. But no, it was, uh, it is what I am dubbing the new Skyrim, Grand Theft Auto 5. Grand Theft Auto 5 is coming to PS5, enhanced and whatever. Guys, Grand Theft Auto 5 was a PlayStation 3 game. I get it, it makes a shit ton of money, but just, whatever. Don't, don't start your presentation with getting everyone's hopes up. Rockstar, oh, GTA 6? Nah, it's not even their latest game. It's not even Red Dead 2. It's, it, it's GTA 5. Come on! After that disappointment, a guy talked for like two seconds and then quickly was like, you know what, let's just let the game speak for themselves. And I'm glad that the industry realizes that's what people want. Don't have your shareholders meeting on stage. Talk to them on the phone if you want. You have to show me games that I want to play and why I want to play them. And the first thing they showed off was Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is a sequel to Spider-Man on the PS4, and it's just a new game. And they all they showed was a trailer, some gameplay stuff. I never played the first game, but I heard it was really good, and it's just cool to see, hey, they're working on a new one, and this time it's focusing on Miles Morales, which is a cool character. I liked him in the uh, Spider-Verse movie, you know. Hey, change things up. How many Spider-Man games have we had? Peter Parker, let's do something new, all right? Then they showed Gran Turismo, which, you know, I am not really a racing car guy, and it's like whatever, but those games have always been a graphical showcase for their consoles. I mean, hell, the PS2 game still looks okay. You know, it runs in 1080i, I think, or something. It's insane. Gran Turismo 4, I think. So Gran Turismo's back. It's cool to see, but it's not really my thing, so I didn't really take much away from it. But the next one, Ratchet & Clank Rifts Apart, did actually pique my interest. I've always wanted to really get into those games, and I've played a few of them, but they were always games like on the PS2 that my friends had that I was just watch them play like oh this game's awesome and then I know they've stumbled a bit recently like the last one was a remake but it had to come out with the movie and it was a little meh hopefully this one doesn't have that problem they can take their time and the game looks gorgeous you know since the PS3 I think they've been marketing these games as Pixar movies come to life but this really shows that and another thing it shows is what I was talking about before the scale of things or or the ease of being able to do stuff like they show an alien planet being attacked and people are running all over or aliens are running all over like oh no oh god help us but on PlayStation 5 it seems like that's gonna be a lot easier to do you can have a bunch of NPCs on screen you can have a bunch of characters and stuff going on and you can still play the game it doesn't have to be this lockdown super scripted sequence to get it to look good you know it'll just be part of the game which I like. Ratchet and Clank is good to see. It's one of their main mascots, and I hope that's a launch title, because, you know, a lot of the things they're showing off are the big ones. They're like, we got a new Spider-Man coming, we got Gran Turismo coming, and we got Ratchet and Clank coming. What you got? What you got? We got, we got Ratchet and Clank. Then they showed off something called Project Etha? Etha? A Etha? I don't really know, but it looks like a very just like early development kind of game where you're like a witch in the woods fighting demon things or something. It didn't really give you a sense of what it is. So like I'm going to say with a lot of these, they're kind of bad trailers. Um, some of them, you know, the, the, the Spider-Man trailer, like, we know what this, because there's a first game, we know what it's gonna be. Gran Turismo, we know it's a driving game. Ratchet and Clank, we know what that is. But Project Etha or whatever, I don't know what you're doing it. You're you you fight wizard things. I don't know. Then there was a really weird game which starts out with like a, a sign that says rip humans like oh rest in peace humans I guess humans are gone and it's a robot and it's a robot world and you see this cat moving through the environment and uh, you know you see robots and I guess it takes place in a future where humans died out. I kind of like that as a setting like maybe the robots didn't kill us we just died out and now they're what's left. You know, maybe we used to live in peace. Like it said, rip humans, they, they feel bad that we're gone. Sorry, guys. But throughout the whole trailer, there's this little cat running around, and me and John were joking the whole time, like, oh, I hope you play as the cat. I want to play as the cat. And then at the end of the trailer, the name of the game is Stray. You play as the cat. You play as the cat in Robot World. Now, again, it's not a great trailer, because I don't really know what you do in the game, but if the concept is enough to get you interested, then I guess it is a good trailer. So in that case, it showed off an interesting world that I want to experience. I want to see what the game has to offer. After that, they showed a little bit of the controller, which is actually a pretty big departure from uh, the PlayStation 4 controller. It's a lot bigger. It's, it's kind of like an Xbox controller, which is fine because I think for the longest time, people have said Xbox controllers are pretty damn good. Yes, I have a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle one. Uh, Neeb's got it for me and said, here you go, now you can never steal ours. 
But they showed off the controller and a few other tech things. They said like, ooh, it has 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray and a high-speed SSD with ray tracing. And like I was saying before, the high-speed SSD, ray tracing, and stuff like that, I think is what's going to make this generation just be more polished. And you know, ray tracing isn't easy to do. Even I mean, I have a 2080 Ti and some games, you know, chug with that. But you know, in Ratchet and Clank, it looked like things like the high dynamic range and the reflections on the floor and stuff like that were just easier to do. There's small things that you notice just kind of if you're looking for it. They also showed some of the haptic feedback features of the controller. I think that's kind of like the HD rumble of the Switch. You know, anything to get you slightly more immersed. You know, the, the Switch is just kind of okay for certain things, but it is neat. You know, if it's a harmless addition, why not? And there's also a microphone built into the controller. These controllers are gonna cost, you know, like a hundred bucks, I'm sure. And that's probably their plan. Like, let's shove as much tech as we can, but it's good to see some part of it being innovative because, you know, the box is a box. You can't do much with the box, but the controller, it's what you interact with. Hey, if there's a quick controller that I can hit a button and go like, yeah, yeah, fuck off, uh, screw your mom, you know, it's easier. Then there was a super serious trailer of a super serious game. And, you know, something about these kind of trailers turns me off. I, I Not in a sexual way. But the fact that it, it just takes itself so seriously, it didn't look awful or anything. And actually the gameplay looked fun. It was this thing called uh, Returnal, which was like this lady in space stuck in a loop. It's Groundhog Day. And there's actually multiple games with Groundhog Day, you know, environment kind of stuff. But the first one was Returnal. Oh, you return eternally? Oh, eternally returning, I get it. But I guess it looked like, you know, when you actually see the gameplay, it kind of looks like a third person, like shoot em up, kind of like Risk of Rain 2 that came out where you just kind of like survive as long as you can. And then if you die, maybe it resets. I don't know if that's exactly what it is, but the few snippets of gameplay I got, it looks more arcadey than its serious trailer makes it, you know, out to be. It looks like you're jumping around, shooting things and, and, and taking care of business. But then it's like, I'm becoming part of the planet. Ooh. After that, they showed off Super Mario World 3D. I'm sorry, I mean, uh, Sack, Sack Boy, uh, a big adventure. Sack Boy, a big adventure. Definitely not Mario 3D World. Definitely not that, but totally that. Sack Boy, a big adventure. Is, you know, it's Sackboy. It's the, um, what's the games it's from? Sackboy is from... There was three of them. You created stuff. Oh, what was the name of these games? Oh no, my mind, it's going, it's, it's blanking. No, hang on, I'm not moving on until I get this. Sackboy. You create stuff. Little Big Planet, got it. Okay, Sack Boys from Little Big Planet kind of became a little bit of a Sony mascot. Not as big as like, oh, the big boys like Crash and all that stuff, but you know, a Ratchet and Clank. But there, there he is, and it looks like they made a 3D platformer that focuses somewhat on multiplayer with four players, and it kind of it locks the camera in one way. And there's these jumpy pads that literally are from the Mario game. So. Whatever, you know what? The PlayStation crowd, especially kids who own PlayStation, they can't afford all the consoles probably. So hey, have a Mario game, but just don't call it Mario. Get the hat off them. There you go, Sackboy Adventures, whatever. After that silly game, they actually showed off another silly game, Destruction All-Stars, which kind of looks like a Rocket League type thing, but with Destruction Derby and cars. So I guess you guys, you, you run around, you blow each other up, you can actually get out of the cars and do flips and stuff, but it just looks like a fun video game. It's a video game. It's not serious. It's just, you know, a silly game. I hope it's like a $20 download game like Rocket League, and I would play the hell out of that. You know, when you get out of the vehicles, I, I'm assuming that gives you something to do when you die. So like everyone's in a car, but if you die, maybe you could still run around and, and kind of work together to, against the other cars and maybe crash some of them. You know, I'm glad you don't just die and then you just sit there and wait until the match is over. I'm assuming that's why, but I do want to see more of this game because it just looks generally fun. After that, they showed off a really cool looking game, Akina Bridge of Spirits. And this reminds me of a PlayStation 2 game but not visually. Visually, this game looks great. It's another case of the art style basically being perfected. You know, it doesn't need to be photorealistic. It is a beautiful, like, animated world, but it looks like an adventure game, kind of like a Legend of Zelda mixed with Pikmin, because there's these little, like, black blobby things that you run around with, and, they, and then you control them, and they go off and do stuff for you, and it's weird. 
but it looks fun. It's a simple, fun looking adventure game. When I say it looks like a PlayStation 2 game, it reminds me of a lot of like new IPs that started on the PlayStation 2. There was just a lot of adventure games for that platform that you never even saw again. And this looks like a really cool game. I, mean, I think it might be geared a little bit more towards kids, but I'll check it out. Cause it honestly, it just looks fun. I would, I would never get the smile off my face when playing that game, I feel like. Then they showed off Dinosaur Teen Angst The Game. I think it's a game. This was one of the worst trailers of the show. And that doesn't mean it's probably, it, it might be a, a great game. I don't know, but this trailer is bad. First off, maybe I'm beyond the years where I care about high school angst because the, the whole time I'm watching this trailer of dinosaurs in high school with their friends, like we gotta do something that matters, man. I'm, I just wanna yell at the screen, nothing you do in high school matters. I'm just saying this whole trailer, I just wanna yell and be like, come on. But the point of the trailer is I don't know what the game is at all. It's clearly some kind of story based game. It says goodbye Volcano High and the logo is an asteroid. So maybe you're playing as dinosaurs before the world ends and maybe you gotta do something great before it's the end of the world. But I don't know, I'm just guessing because the trailer is awful. Show me what the game is. What is it? It's 2D in the trailer. Is it a point and click adventure game? That could be cool. It, it, what is it? I don't know what it is. And I, you haven't shown me enough for me to want to go find out more. So maybe I'll see another trailer one day, but eh, eh. After that, there was Oddworld Soulstorm, which is cool to see an Oddworld game coming back. I think the original creator came out and was like, hey, I wanted to make this, here we are. And the problem with it is, it doesn't look great. You're showing off a PlayStation 5 experience and not everything is about graphics. And I'm not saying graphically, but I think polish wise, it didn't look very good. They're going for the 2D style of basically the remake. It doesn't look polished. Like, you know, the camera movement seems like jittery and it, it, I don't know, something about it just didn't grab me as like, oh wow, look at this like really well polished put together game. That's really nice. Uh, it just kind of looked janky, but hey, there's obviously a lot of Oddworld fans. It's an old PlayStation, not exclusive, but a PlayStation classic in a lot of ways, but it's good to see it back. Maybe a lot of the stuff I'm talking about will be fixed by the time it comes out, but the very first showing of it doesn't make you go like, wow, it just makes you go like, okay. Speaking of another, okay, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo was shown off, which I think they announced before. I remember seeing a trailer for this, but this one showed gameplay of a really weird looking like Tokyo horror world. There's schoolgirls without heads and demons and creatures, you know, Japanese horror is its own weird thing. And you know, it's cool to see in a video game represented like this, but the actual gameplay itself, kind of again, like Oddworld, looks kind of cheap and stiff. Um, you, your, your character, you know, you're, you're casting spells, but the movement just kind of, I mean, you look, you're looking at it. The movement just kind of looks like simple and cheap. I don't know. There's no weight to any characters. And it kind of reminded me, um, you know, those dungeon crawler games where you actually like move up a block at a time and then you face an enemy and you go, ha ha ha. That's kind of what it reminded me of. And if that's what it is, then great. But the trailer makes it out to be maybe something it's not. So it's just kind of weird looking, but it's got a cool setting and I like some of the visuals. Then we have another game that I can't tell you anything about from the trailer called Jetty, The Far Shores. Uh, it starts off with a weird, like you're in the past, but then a spaceship goes off and then time goes by. And all I can think of, again, I'm guessing is maybe this is like a civilization type game where, you know, you take civilization, you start at the beginning and you move through the age of space or like kind of like a spore in space or something like that. But again, not really a great trailer if I have to guess so much. So then there was Godfall, which I think they've shown off before. But as Aptra said, I think they used the, the, the Madden music that was supposed to be with Madden in this trailer because this game is like epic sword wielding night people. And then they had rap music over it. I didn't get what they were going for. It just, it, it didn't fit. It, I couldn't find how the square hole went into the rap music peg. It was weird. As far as the game, I also wasn't too impressed with it. Um, it doesn't, it's another game that just, I know they're pre-alpha, I know they're early, but they're showing this off like it's our first look at it. We need to be, we want to be impressed. And a lot of it didn't look too great. Like the attacks seem weightless. Um, you know, I played like beat em up MMOs before, uh, you know, what's that game? Soul, soul something, soul, soul caliber, no soul, whatever it was. It's kind of just like you run around, you do an attack, <laughs> move on to the next guy. And that's kind of what this felt. It kind of felt like a Dynasty Warrior game where there is no impact. You just swing wildly and things happen. I don't know, after playing games like Dark Souls and stuff like that, that have that impactful hit, this just kind of looked weak. Uh, yeah, so it didn't really leave a good impression and the trailer music was completely out of like touch with what it is or I don't, 
Bah. So forget about Godfall, but something I actually enjoyed looking at was Solar Ash. And this is another example of the trailer really didn't show me much. I don't know what Solar Ash is. I know it's from the guys who made a Hyper Light something or something. It was like a 2D beat em up RPG thing, whatever it was. I don't care that I don't know what the gameplay is. It, it clearly looks inspired by Zelda. It clearly did like the Zelda thing where you run out and there's the world. But visually, it just looks weird enough that I want to check out more. You know, that's what a trailer has to do. It has to show me enough to then want more and find out more. Then there was Hitman 3, and this is one that I think will really benefit from the next gen push. You know, when I say there's gonna be more NPCs, there's gonna be more detail on screen, more stuff to do. That's a Hitman game. That's, you know, instead of giving me a hotel, give me a city to run around in and interact with everyone, or even, even keep the scale small, but pack as much detail and density into that small place that you can, because the Hitman games are all about going in. I've never played the new ones, but I've heard they're pretty good, but they're all about going in and accomplishing your mission in one way or another. You could sneak through the crowd in a disguise and kill someone, or you could poison their food, or you could electrocute them in the bathroom, or I, whatever it is. Although they did have a weird part where at the end the guy's like, and now I want to show you more of the game. And I thought they were going to show us like actual gameplay, and they just showed us another trailer. What was up with that? Why'd you do that? Show us the game. Don't just show another trailer. Don't waste my time. Then there was Astro's Playroom, which featured those little robots. If you guys ever had a PlayStation webcam, you could like play around with them. They'd be in your controller. And I guess they're making another Playroom kind of deal for the PlayStation 5. And it's probably to, you know, show off, I think some of the new controller features or probably something like that. I can't see it being a full game. And maybe it'll be like a pack-in thing, kind of like Wii Sports, where it's like, oh, check out our new console, and this is what it can do. Ooh, the controller has this rumble feature. Wow, how crazy. You know, it's fine, simple, but it, it, uh, you know, it'll probably be a little pack-in thing. Hopefully it's small. Then there was what might have been my favorite game of the show. It's tied between this and something that'll come up later, which was really big. But this, I just, from the first seconds of it, I loved its art style, and I wanted to play it. I want more. It's called Little Devil Inside, and you play as this character with these big bug eyes and he's running around kind of like in an open world-ish field fighting animals or something. I don't know. The game shows very little, not to spoil everything. I guess the guy that you're playing as is inside this old man because it cuts from like the real world to this fantasy world. I don't know what that's about, but just the parts with the adventure guy had me sold. This is again another example of the art style perfected. The PlayStation 5 just lets them do whatever they want and so they make a cool looking artistic game like this. It doesn't have to be realistic, it just has to look cool. That's all I care about. And this game looked really cool. Getting closer to the end, we had Bug Snacks, which was this game from the people who made Octodad. And as soon as I saw that the weird trailer started to make a little bit more sense, you're playing as a character who can eat bugs that are made out of snacks. My favorite one was baby back ribs that were a little centipede walking around. Like that was amazing. There's ice cream snakes, burger spiders and stuff like that. It's weird, but you eat it and then your character becomes part of the thing you ate. It's really weird, but I want to find out more. It's so weird that I want to know more. And it also gives me a weird, like, don't hug me, I'm scared vibe. Like, it looks like it could be a kid's game, but I wouldn't be surprised if this game is like rated M or T for teen because something feels off. Something doesn't feel right. It feels like at any minute, the veil is going to be pulled away and it's going to be a horrible, horrible disaster, but not of a game uh, in the story. So, bug snacks. Weird. Then there was what I almost thought was going to be my game of the show because I know From Software is working on a new game. Um, there's been rumors going around it for a long time. They're working on something new and I was like, oh, maybe they'll show it. Maybe they'll show it. And I saw something that I recognized from something and I was like, oh, this is the new Dark Souls or something. Turns out I recognized it from Demon Souls. I had played Demon Souls a long time ago, never beat it. And I remembered, you know, obviously the opening with the dangling body. And then I was like, oh, that's why I started noticing like the big shield boss and a few other things. Oh, okay. We're getting a Demon Souls remake done by Bluepoint, the same guys who did the Shadow Colossus remake a few years ago. It seems like that's their thing. They do remakes and they do it really well. And this looks great. Like visually, it looks better than like Dark Souls 3 or Sekiro or anything that has been done in the past. So uh, the fact that they're pushing that that far 
looks really exciting. It also has me excited for the next game because there's no way they're gonna let the remake look better than whatever From Software is actually working on. So I'm excited to play that. I tried to play the original a long time ago, never got super far because it is a little clunky compared to later games. Regardless, excited to see that, ready to play it. Hopefully they polish things up and it's less clunky and I think a whole new generation of people can enjoy that game. Then there was a first person shooter that was really cool called Deathloop, where you play as this guy who's stuck in a death loop. This is the second in the games that have the Groundhog Day looping thing, but this one looks much more fun. It's from the developers of the Dishonored games, because you can see it clear very clearly has like the teleport and things like that that can, you know, just I guess the point of this is you start in the world and you have to defeat these people and leave. But there's this other assassin lady who's chasing you and you it's basically just a fun idea. The gunplay looks fast and frantic which makes it all kind of come together. The fact that it's like, I gotta get out of this loop, I gotta escape, bam, bam, boom, okay, you know, that's what kind of sold me on it. Plus just the style is fun. The characters seem to be having fun, even though it's like people getting shot and dying. They're having a good time, they're having a fun time, but it has this like Quentin Tarantino kind of vibe and it, yeah, it just, it sold me right there and then I was like, all right, let's play it. Whew, it was a big show. They showed off and this was just trailers. There was barely anyone talking. They just said, oh, trailers, go. Um, um, I think somewhere in there they showed a guy playing basketball. He was really sweaty. They didn't really show a game, so whatever. But they showed off then Resident Evil 8. It's actually a trailer that doesn't tell you it's Resident Evil 8. The trailer is very cryptic. It looks a little bit like Resident Evil 7, but at first I didn't think it was Resident Evil 7 because this was a first person horror game. And I thought, or at least maybe I was hoping, the next Resident Evil, since they've done the second remake and the third remake, they were going to make, you know, a new original style Resident Evil game with that third person, you know, engine they've been doing the remakes with. I just assumed like, oh, these have been doing well. Maybe we'll make a brand new one. But no, it looks like they're going back to the first person style of Resident Evil 7 and taking that and just expanding on it because this time it takes place in an entire village, which I'm actually really intrigued by because my favorite Resident Evil, and I think a lot of people's favorite Resident Evil is Resident Evil 4. But the more I go back to Resident Evil 4, the more I realize it's really, really silly. Like a giant statue is chasing you, being piloted by a tiny Napoleon man. Regardless, I think the best part of Resident Evil 4 is the opening, which takes place in a village that you're going in and investigating. And if that's what this new game is kind of going for, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that kind of, you're going to this town and you gotta solve what's going on, what's happening here. Uh, visually, it looks great. Uh, it has, you know, the same, the, the, the RE engine looks great. It has that intensity to everything. I never finished Resident Evil 7. I don't finish a lot of games, but I really enjoyed what they did there, at least in the opening bits. It was very atmospheric and it basically was the old Resident Evils in first person. And this one just looks great. It looks weird. I want to see more. Then this weird trailer with a spaceman in a virtual world with a girl and a cat, another cat. There's a lot of cats. I think next generation is going to be defined by its cat physics. I mean, I'm just saying. But there was a cat, a girl, and it was a virtual world that then broke open and a satellite came in. It was weird. You, nobody knows what it is. And I swore at the end it was going to go Kojima Productions because it, it, it looked like something that had his stamp all over it. But apparently it's a game from Capcom, so I'm not sure what it is. Again, Kind of a bad trailer in the sense I don't know what it is, but it kind of feels like the whale trailer from Metal Gear Solid 5 years and years ago. They just showed off a whale and we're like, what is this? Why is this here? It's a flaming whale. I don't understand. Right now, I think we'll look back on this trailer. Hopefully the game is good, but we'll look back on it and be like, oh, that's what they were setting up. It gets me intrigued with the concept. Then the biggest news of the show, at least to me, because it's a sequel to one of my favorite games of probably all time, Horizon 2 Forbidden West, the second Horizon Zero Dawn, I guess Horizon 2, it's not Zero Dawn anymore, but yes, Horizon Zero Dawn, if you never played it, play it, do it. It's a great mixture. I love the Uncharted games and I'm not always the biggest fan of an open world game, but this game took the production values of Uncharted and put it into an open world. And the open world isn't huge. I think the game takes me like 20 hours versus like an overblown GTA that takes you like hundreds. It's the perfect length and the perfect size and the perfect environment. I love the idea of an Earth in the future, robots 
and people are living together and the people there don't know that these robots aren't part of nature. And I, I just found that world so fascinating and so captivating. And now there's a second one. They show off beach environments with crabs and, you know, things that weren't in the first game. The first game had a lot of mountains, but this one seems to be going west. There's beaches and the sea and more, just more environments that we didn't see before and flying animals this time, which hopefully you can tame and then fly. In the first game, you, you there was some birds that flew around, but you couldn't tame them and fly on them. Hopefully that's what the trailer was signifying at the end is that there were birds and you could fly those and you can also swim this time. If you can't tell, I'm really excited. Horizon Zero Dawn, one of my favorite games. Uh, the world was just captivating and I just want to see more of it and it looks beautiful. I'm pretty sure what we're seeing is in-engine stuff because, you know, honestly, it looks a lot like the first game, just polished up. Like I was saying, PlayStation 4, polished up. Looks really nice. And after that, the final thing they showed off was the box. Oh my god, the box! Can you believe it? Can you believe how it has those weird fins? Can you believe all those memes of the weird fin- Who gives a shit? Who has ever bought a console based on how the box looks? Who? And not saying special editions. But when the N64 came out, and it was this thing with- You didn't care. You just bought it and put your Nintendo in it, and, and if anything, you were looking at the controller going, What the hell is this? You know, nobody cares, or at least most people don't care, what the box looks like. Even when the Xbox One launched and it was a giant VCR, who cares? My biggest concern is does the thing stay cool and does it overheat? The Xbox Series X has made a tower just for cooling, just to make sure they don't have another red ring of death scenario. And you know, the PlayStation 5, I think it looks fine. It's a box, I don't really care. It's gonna sit over there and collect dust while I play Horizon Zero Dawn 2. But yeah, that was basically the show. I'm excited for the next generation. Because, you know, as, as much as you want to say, like, oh, consoles don't matter, they do push the industry forward in a way. I think sometimes the industry stagnates at the end of a console generation because they're waiting to release their new stuff or push graphics forward or push visuals forward. But, you know, the, the fact that the industry is pushed forward by these consoles, is, it's true. You know, it, we move into a new generation. They call it a new generation for a reason. You know, those games then move on to PC and we all live happily ever after. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look. I just like talking about I was gonna say E3 again it's not E3 but I like talking about this time of the year and especially this time of a console generation I like seeing new stuff come out I love being surprised by things I, I didn't know I wanted and I didn't know were coming and I can't wait to see more and if you like this uh, I'll do an Xbox one because like I said I ain't no fanboy I don't care as long as the game is good I'll play it so thank you guys for watching let me know what you think below and also words and I've been talking for a long time and I gotta go sit down, cause, oh, PlayStation. Thank you so much for watching, and a special thanks to everyone on Patreon who helps support this channel. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to join.